come against the same opposition. What did you just say? And it was all yellow as Kerala Blasters FC and Hyderabad FC came along and wrote a song of celebrations for their fans in the semi-final first legs of the Hero ISL 2021-22 season. And before we look ahead to the second legs, it's time to digest the events of the first legs with Shaiju Damodaran, Pulas Dhar and Kaushik Varun, who will come right in as they always do, except on a Sunday this time around because... We yes, delayed it by a day. We delayed it by mm-hmm. a day because we just wanted to get through everything that we could this week, right? Uh, but before we do do that, uh, Shaji Chetan, I want to ask you, did you have a chance to join in celebrations in Kalur once uh, your commentary stint was over uh, in, in the KBFC versus JFC match? No, uh, Suyash, actually, uh, they had invited me uh, to to kick off the things there in the celebration. But, uh, no, you know, you I, have prior to, commitments? I have to do the, uh, the, the, the duty commitments. Na? So due to the duty commitments, uh, I couldn't go there. But I really enjoyed the visuals. Yeah, as did all of us. In fact, uh, you know, we were receiving them live while the game was going on. And just to see those visuals again, just to see fans uh, back in fan parks. And of course, now we're going to have fans uh, for the Hero ISL final as well. So that's something that I personally am really excited uh, to to uh, viewing. And uh, Pulas, uh, are, you, are you sad uh, just on a tiny bit uh, that, that you might not uh, be in the stadium for the final? Uh, yeah, not not sad, but but I might be. I might just get a. Oh, you might just turn up and be part of turn up, turn up and be part of part of the fans. A bit of a different perspective. Yeah. So you know that. Um, so I am actually excited. I, I'm excited about picking up a few tickets and then gathering a yeah. few friends and turning up at the stadium for the final. You know, and there, there's a different joy attached to just being a spectator rather than yeah. than having yeah. to do something on match day because we're, we're lucky to do what we do. But as a spectator, you can just completely immerse yourself in the game and Absolutely. enjoy it in its purest form. Uh, and I know, I know Varun's attended a lot of games in the Yuva Bharati Kriyangan as well. So Varun, uh, next season, two teams you have uh, to follow uh, at the Salt Lake Stadium. You, you're looking forward to that? Exactly. Like uh, we all are looking forward to that only because we have been waiting and talking about it. And we are just hoping, you know, the crowd's coming back and the match is coming back to the home city. So we are looking forward to it like uh, with a lot of eagerness. Yeah, so another thing that we're looking forward to now is, of course, we have a fifth panelist, as we always do. But this time around, uh, he's not a current manager, he's not a player, but he still is a Hero ISL legend. I would certainly call him that because he's won the championship before. Uh, and now he's, of course, with Star Sports, providing his expert analysis uh, from pit side. So let me waste no more time in introducing John Gregory to the Let's Football live show. Good afternoon, Sir John Gregory. How are you doing? Very well indeed, thank you. Good to see you guys, thank you. Yes, good to see you as well. Uh, we're very excited to go through all of the talking points of the first legs uh, of the Hero ISL 2021-22 semi-finals. But before we do that, just wanted to harken back to your time at Chennai and FC. And uh, we have a couple of mm. pictures that no one really has seen before of, of you and your time at Chennai and FC before. Where uh, a little story behind uh, these visuals is that Arun, who works for our digital team, was a fan back then and he'd managed to click these pictures of you. John, how do you look back at your time with Chennai and FC? With fond memories, I assume? Well, obviously, um, that, that particular, I remember doing that actual uh, photograph. Oh, you do. <laughs> uh, yeah, I remember. I remember it very well, and um, it was. Uh, I mean, obviously, the 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 first season there, season four, was was amazing. It was a great experience for me. Um, obviously, I got the opportunity to come to India, and and I felt that I was at the start of something really sort of happening. You know, I'd obviously followed the first three seasons, and um, some of the stars that had come to this country to play. Um, were quite incredible how, how they managed how you guys managed to get them to come to India yes. to play and um, obviously they graced the tournament and um, we managed to like, get you as well John so we did good well yeah um, <laughs> but yeah I think I, when I did come I obviously um, had to prove myself not not that many people I would have thought had heard of me before I came certainly to Chennai so, so uh, the, I met the fans there um, I landed at the airport and the fans met me at the airport which uh, I'd never experienced anything like that before in my life. You know, it was uh, it was quite amazing, and uh, it literally went on from there. You know, we had a big love affair, uh, and we ended up winning the, the trophy at the end of that first season. And when we came back to the airport uh, after flying back from um, Bangalore, 
we landed at Chennai Airport and again we just had a it was like a motorcade that, that followed us back uh, to the stadium. Um, all the fans had turned up on their motorbikes and cars and God knows what else, you know. And again, you know, that was my first experience of something like that. Uh, and that was that was truly incredible. And um, obviously, um, I always look back on that year and uh, what a special time it was for me and everyone connected with our team. Well, thanks for sharing those memories, John. And there's something mm -hmm. about the, the fanhood that, especially the southern teams in the Hero ISL have. You look at Chennai and FC, you look at Bengaluru FC, and of course, how can I complete that sentence without mentioning Kerala Blasters <laughs> FC as well? Uh, John, we have uh, Shaiju Chetan over here, who is uh, unabashedly is a Kerala Blasters FC fan, and he was very, very excited uh, at, the, at the win uh, against Jamshedpur FC in the first leg of the, of the semi-final. So why don't you mm -hmm. just... Um, Tell us how the game went according to you in your own eyes when we had KBFC versus JFC um, in, in terms of uh, how both teams lined up against each other. Do you feel it was a close encounter? Yeah, I mean, it was, it was, it turned out to be very close in the end, but, um, you know, JFC have gone into that game really on fire. Um, and Kerala managed to finally get there, having sat top of the league at one stage. Uh, they managed to get, get into the semi final place. Um, but I was fully expecting, we're seeing uh, Chima. Uh, he got in two fantastic goal-scoring opportunities, which he would normally put away. I mean, I said to Owen Cole the other night that once Chima got in that position, you just expect him to score. And of course, Sahal's goal was was brilliant. Brilliant ball from Vasquez, straight down through the middle. He, he's picked him out. And the boys still had a lot to do. Sahal still had a lot to do at that last minute of actually getting the ball over the goalkeeper. Uh, it was executed perfectly. Uh, and it was a fantastic goal. And after that, obviously, there was this effort from Luna, which uh, when he lined up to take the free kick, I just thought there's no way he's going to try from there. I mean, he looked even further. He looked even further out than, than his um, than that special goal that he scored earlier on in in, in the uh, league matches. Um, but it was uh, an amazing effort from him. And um, I mean, in the end, they were hanging on because JFC really obviously pushed right to the final whistle. Um, yeah. But this this game's not over. Yeah, um, they've got uh, JFC will really come back at them, I'm sure, uh, in the next in the next leg on Tuesday night. It'll be a, it'll be another very, very special match. Yeah. Shaju Jetan, if there's anything we know about Jamshedpur FC, it's that they have a never say die attitude and undying spirit. So uh, it's going to be an exciting uh, first uh, second leg of the first semi final. But before we come on to that, I was just discussing with Varun about the star performers. And we particularly spoke about uh, Hormipam Ruiva. Varun, I, I mm -hmm. believe you as well as a lot of other people were impressed by him courtesy his uh, hero of the match performance. No, absolutely. Like he's outstanding. Like throughout the season, not only in that match, and you know, like. Uh... The injury of Sipu, which has been kind of a blessing in disguise for him. And even Alvino Gomes' injury for Pratok and Gil. And now we see Homi Bum in an outstanding form. And I think he's been very impressive throughout the season. Consistent. And Leskovic is going wrong maybe sometimes. Homi Bum is going out there and he's, you know, uh, trying to defend uh, for his team. Uh, would you agree, John, sir? Yeah, definitely. Um, again, I because of, of just sort of coming into the team for the first time and I'm... This season has been sort of the first season I've got to see these guys. Um, and I'm sometimes shocked by their tender age. You know, they play like... Hormipan played the other night like a, like a veteran, you know, like he's been there for many, many years, playing alongside... Uh, uh, in, in that back four all the time, uh, alongside Leskovic. They just look like they've played together for four or five years, you know. Um, he had an outstanding game the other night and quite rightly got uh, awarded the uh, hero of the match by Eric P uh, Patelou. So um, it's great to see these. It's obviously great for the national coach as well, you know, to um, starting to get sort of the product, I think, from the Hero Indian Super League. Some of the guys, some of these guys have, have obviously grown up with the Hero Indian Super League and they're now sort of uh, becoming established players and established stars, which in turn is obviously going to help the national team. John, you mentioned that uh, the hero of the match was was decided by Eric Partlu. Who did your vote go to? Well, to be honest, we 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 speak it at half time. Right. We, we obviously did the half time show, so uh, we obviously get uh, two or three minutes to have a little chat about the game, like we like we are now. We talk about the game and who's right. playing well, and and uh, he, he literally sort of said said to me at half time, "I think I, I already know who the hero of the match is." You know, this was at half time. Because Homi Panda had a, an outstanding first half, so um, no, I, I don't think I would need to to change uh, from from Eric's decision. And um, 
it, it's it's rare that um, myself and Eric get that wrong. You know, we we tend to like the same kind of things. We've sort of got the same kind of background. You know, yes. uh, being midfield players, um, being you know um, the same sort of interest. He's obviously been very successful at, at Bangalore. Uh, one stage but um yeah we're, we're never too far wrong from the heroes uh, of the match lovely and uh Pulas, if i was to ask you and shaju chetan who your respective hero of the matches would have been uh would you have gone for for hormi as well Pulas, you first uh it was close between leskovic and hormi pam but mm. then when it comes down you know this kind of a choice i have observed that it's sometimes also like a you know a token of appreciation to a younger Indian player when it's that close to give it Absolutely. to him. And, and there's always that slight, slight edge, you know, because quickly, five years later, these people are going to grow up and become hopefully established players in the ISL. This is the chance to give them this kind of encouragement. So it was close, but then, yeah, eventually, Horby Pump did get it. I tend what to about you, Shai Yeah, uh, same like, uh, like Pula said. Uh, it might be a very close shave between... Uh, uh, Hormi Palm and Laskov. But I, I would like to add two more names to that uh, hero of the match list. Uh, Putia had a great job. Uh, he had a great match, uh, cutting down all the channels of Greg Stewart, which was which went very crucial in that match. And of course, Sahal. Uh, Sahal uh, for there scoring is. that uh, crucial goal. And one more hero of the match for me is the coach, Ivan Vukumanovic himself. So he's been the pretty much the hero of the season, hasn't he been? Because he's, he's the one who's really glued the team together and uh, uh, when we speak about managers in, in this light, I'm sure ex-manager of Chennai NFC, John Gregory, would mm-hmm. it would warm the cockles of his heart to, to see managers being uh, spoken about uh, in that regard. So, uh, apart from that, Sahal, right? We spoke about Sahal. So, let's just take a look at Sahal's goal as well and, and just break that down a little bit. Now, John, just speak us, uh, uh, pardon, talk us through these visuals over here. You see that ball from Alvaro Vasquez. Sahal is still... Uh, far behind. He's not anywhere close to the, the line that the defenders are holding. But he still managed to get through. No, I, I actually spoke to him the other night, Sahal, um, and he said basically once he knew that uh, the ball had gone to Vasquez, he, kn- he knew that Vasquez has the ability to actually execute that kind of pass. Yeah. So obviously, obviously when he made when he made there was every every chance that he would actually be able to reach him with the pass. So um, that's what you trust. I mean, that's what being able yeah. to understand your teammates. You just look over there. You, you see over there, right at the point where the pass was about to be made. He's at the halfway line. But He's got a long way to go. Yeah. And, and a mistake by the defender as well, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, Ricky's uh, managed to get his head on the ball. But uh, also, it, I think it, it cast a doubt in the goalkeeper's mind as well, whether or not to calm or stay at home. But obviously, Sahal's got one eye on the ball. He's got one eye on the goalkeeper. He's also got one eye on, on Ricky. And he's still got to execute the pass into the back of the net. And, I mean, there's not a lot of room to play with. He miscues that. If he miscues it, he either misses the target. It could have bounced over the crossbar as well if he, if he gave it too much air. But he gave it just the right amount of touch and feel. And it was a great goal. I hope for his sake um, that he learns a lot this season from the people that he's played with and the team that he's played with. Because, uh, obviously, as media, the media have obviously built him up into be this next superstar of Indian football. And uh, he's probably found it a little bit difficult to carry. Um, and I hope that this season, that he, he's got to become more of a 90-minute player. I think instead of seeing, you see him in patches, certainly uh, in the last couple of years, you'd see him in patches in games. And then some games you play, you wouldn't even notice him. You wouldn't even notice he's on the field. And suddenly the game's passed him by. And um, we're, we're all wondering what what's happened to his development. So hopefully... This season, we've seen a little bit more of him being a 90-minute player in, yeah. instead of, instead of a, a 20-minute player. So, um, and, and I think playing with the players he's playing with at the moment has, has really, really helped him. And the coach as well. Don't, don't forget the coach. I think the coach has helped him as well. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned the coach, John, because uh, it's an internal observation that we made as well, that Sahal is also working a lot harder on the pitch than, than he has previously. Uh, so, credit right. to the manager, Ivan Vukumanovic, there for getting that out of him. Of course, he has the skill, but if you don't mm. work hard on the pitch, it, the, the pieces of the puzzle don't, get, don't, don't come together. Yeah, yeah and, if, and if you're you know, somebody like him who's a talented player, it, it's like um, Greg Stewart the other night. They managed to keep Stewart quiet throughout the 90 minutes. And, and it showed that's, that's 
the influence that Stuart has on Jamshedpur this season, he, he wasn't able to show it the other night. And this is what Sahal's got to do. You've got to go, when you go and watch Kerala play, you've got to notice him. He's got to get in the game a lot more than maybe he has in the last couple of years. But certainly this season, they seem to be getting the best out of him. And I think, obviously, um, the, the coach has really got to take a lot of uh, congratulations on that. Yeah, well, when Sahal did what he did in uh, in uh, putting that ball into the net, it sparked off a frenzy, a frenzy <laughs> in Kalur. And take a look at these visuals, guys, because these these are some special visu visuals. They don't come along too often. Uh, and uh, I'll come in back to Shaiju sir and ask him about his feelings about uh, seeing everything that went down in Kalur after after we see this video. Take a look. <laughs> Stadium. This is something we can use packed crowd outside the stadium. So this is what uh, uh, they, the, the real Kerala Blasters fans need. So actually, everybody is disappointed that they didn't they, they didn't get a chance to see the match inside the stadium. Yeah, uh, and you know, Shaju Chetan, we enjoy your commentary as we enjoyed your uh, your live commentary behind those visuals as well. Uh, so we, we missed out on a bit of what you said, but uh, not taking an, anything away from what the celebrations were like. Yes, why don't you just give us a lowdown on that again? And uh, uh, this thing, uh, so yes, yes. One, com one comment I have, uh, one comment I have received live when the match is going on that we are watching the match in the fan park in your voice, which is another feeling because I am not there <laughs> now, but my voice is they're there listening to my voice. So, uh, listening to that, reading that message goosebumps for me also, which, which increases my energy, obviously. Lovely, lovely. Uh, you know, John, another thing that, that did end up uh, uh, maybe maybe giving energy to the head coach, Ivan Vukomanovic as well, you'll only have to look as far as the colour of the shirt that Shaiju uh, Tamodran is wearing right now to, to know yes. uh, <laughs> yes. the backstory behind that. You, you're aware of what went down, right? I, I, know, I know the story very much. And uh, <laughs> I'm still waiting for mine. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I no, 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 no. So yes, let me uh, please give me and please give me a chance to answer this. Yes, yes, please go ahead, sir, sir, John, sir. Really, I would like to give you one. But <laughs> listening to the initial comments which you had already made in this show, I am feeling that you are a Jamshedpur fan. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Shaju, you would you would uh, give a, a former Chennai head coach a white shirt. Right. I don't know what that will do to your to your followers. You know. You, you... No, exactly. <laughs> so yes, one one minute. So yes, please, one minute. Yes, yes, yes. Please, please, the stage is yours. Uh, before before we going into this story of this white shirt, which is entirely owned by the league, I know the story actually started from the LFL live show. So yes, all, yes, yes. my heartfelt thanks to LFL actually. But before starting the story. I would uh, like to give a small answer to my fellow, my friend, my co-panelist, Pulasta Dhar. You, I hope you still... No, 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 no. I, I hope you still remember when you asked me, what will I do if Ivan and KBFC loses this match with my white shirt? So I hope those 90 minutes uh, of the first leg already given you enough answer to that question, Pulasta. Uh... Yes, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And why not? And why not? I like the I like the passion there. See, this is this is what it should be about, right? You know, to you know, kind of just needle shy you a little bit, and then to observe that he's remembered what I said, and then coming back to me. So that's, that's perfect. Nice full circle there, Shaiju. Well done. Love it. You know, uh, someone else uh, who may have slightly needled the opposition after the the first leg was over is, of course, uh, Owen Coyle because he gave a brief interview to the club <laughs> after the match was over, and he spoke about a host of points, but he just left it with a bit of a sweetener at the end. So take a look at what Owen Coyle's thoughts were at the end of the first leg. Hi Owen, your review of the match in 60 seconds? Yeah, I thought we started the game brilliantly uh, with three three unbelievable chances with uh, Daniel twice and Mobashir one-on-one with the goalkeeper to get in front and we've, uh, we've passed up the chances. 
uh, and then you know a bit of indecision to be fair with the goal, uh, just a long ball over the top. I think they had a, a free kick that hit the post the second half, but I can't recall another opportunity they had in the game. Uh, so obviously we're disappointed to to lose the, the run we've been on with the seven straight wins. I always knew it was going to be a difficult game coming so quickly, the amount of injuries we've got. Even Len had to come off early into the game. But again, we keep on going, we're pushing on to get the equaliser. And listen, it's only half time. I've still got the second leg to go. We're a goal behind, we're more than capable of turning us around, which we'll look to do. I mean, there's no doubt uh, the amount of games we've had to play, it's going to take its toll, but they keep on driving on, they keep on pushing on. Ishan could get the equaliser there at the end as well. So we'll look to regroup, get them refreshed and ready to go. And obviously, you know, being the best team in the country, we're obviously going to be the big scalp for everybody. You can see the Keller's reaction, you know, thought they won the World Cup final tonight, but that's fine. It'll give us added fuel to get ready for the second leg, and that's what we'll look to do. Thank you. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> thought they won the World Cup final tonight. Brilliant, brilliant. Just a little so, bit of a... <laughs> a little bit of a sweetener, like we said. But, you know, mm. I was just thinking in my end as well. You you see, of course, that Kerala Blasters FC are playing fearless football, free-flowing football. Cannot count out Jamshedpur FC at the same time because of what they've done. They're the league winner, shield winners at the same time. But when we took a look at the visuals uh, and the celebrations in, in Kalur, it's hard to imagine how that would not just give so much more added fuel to Kerala Blasters FC as well. Because when you're a player, John, and you've been a player yourself, when you see that kind of support uh, in, on display for, for your team, I mean, doesn't it just give you extra legs to, to go out and give it your all, if not for anything else, then for those people who stay up day and night to watch the team? Yeah, and um, to be honest, uh, had this um, semi-final been a two-legged affair and obviously it had one been played in coach actually played in Kochi. I mean, that stadium, I've been inside it as we all have. I've been inside it when there's 40,000 plus in there and it is daunting. It is an incredible, incredibly difficult place to go to. Where, where does get... it rank, John? If, if I'm just interrupt you, where does it rank mm. among all of the atmospheres uh, uh, in all the st st stadiums that you've gone and managed in, 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 in terms of that? Well, I mean... Anfield is a little bit different. Obviously, Old Trafford is a little bit different. I'm so glad you said that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and obviously, we played uh, in UEFA Cup competitions abroad as well, in places like uh, Madrid as well. So, that's, those, those kind of places are, are tough to go to. But um, Kerala is, 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 I think, something special in that respect. You know, everybody wears a yellow shirt. There's 40,000 people inside. And, and just the whole area surrounding that stadium is filled with people wearing yellow shirts and uh, it's daunting. Um, but fortunately, Jamshedpur haven't got to go there. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's on a neutral venue. So in that respect, and, and I think that's where the approach from both coaches and obviously from the players as well is slightly different. You know, had you been going to Kochi, um, if I was Owen Coyle going to coach you, I'd obviously just want to get there. I'd be happy if I was losing 1-0 from the first leg. You know, I, I would be happy going to coach you and trying to, to get a result is always, always difficult. So being only one goal down at the moment, I think um, that's why I said earlier on in the show, you know, there's still so much to play for. And JFC are not out of this by, by any stretch of the imagination. So um, from that point of view, yeah, it's, it is a daunting place to go to. And... Um, as I said, fortunately, Jamshed Poor haven't got to do that. Otherwise, it might be different. And again, again as a coach, um, I mean, in my semi-final, we played in Fatorda. Our, our first semi-final with Chennai in was, was against Goa in Fatorda. And uh, I obviously didn't want to get Goa in the semi-final because they were such an outstanding team. Um, but we, we managed to get them and, and we had to go to, to the Fatorda. And we come away with a 1-1 draw when away goals counted double. If you needed them, yes, and yeah. and to us and to us, it was it honestly it felt like a victory that night. It felt like a victory getting a draw in the Fatorda against a very good Goa team. So to take them back to Chennai in with our home crowd, it made a big difference. And obviously, it's going to be fantastic. There, there's going to be fans at the final, and it's going to be even more fantastic uh, next season when obviously we start to play uh, home games in your own stadium next year. Yeah, fascinating insight. Shaji Jitan, you had uh, a question to John about uh, the prediction that he made before, uh, before the first uh, before, before, before going into that, sure. Suyash and John, I, I call it as a Mallu Marakana. What is okay. that? The, yeah. Our Kochi Stadium, I call it as a Mallu Marakana. 
Okay. Ah, okay, okay. Because of the way it's shaped and because of uh, the general yes. uh, dynamics of the of the stadium as yeah. well. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. uh, you, you're not far from that. Have you been to the Maracana, John? No, I've never been to Maracana. Oh, well, I I I promise to come with you the day you go. We'll we'll yes. go and we'll take notes <laughs> about our observations about about the stadium and then we'll compare it to uh, the JLN at Kochi and then and see where right. it stands and see if Charlie Kitten's uh, uh impression is right but yes uh, yeah. about the prediction that john made yes yeah, yeah. john uh, john i have a question for you uh, before the f- first leg of the first semi final john you have predicted as the match score final score as 1-1 but uh, yeah. it had ended up 1-0 in favor of the kerala blasters so uh, my question is uh, what is your picks what is your what, what what is your thought about that and any change in the prediction for the second leg no as obviously as a pundit i i i'm asked for my predictions always every game so uh, i'm quite willing to do that um i also have to have a slight bit of caution uh, because obviously my uh, favorite team and always will be my favorite team is chennai in so i also have to think of the reac- the reaction of uh, of many of those fans if i'm uh, uh, seen to be supporting one of, one of our local rivals um if not the biggest rival to us uh, kerala blasters so um but i also i mean obviously i i i i use my my knowledge on it i i really felt that um both teams were so evenly matched and it's of course the first leg where um things don't always go uh, according to plan and al- also in a first leg you don't want to give away too much as obviously because you know that you've got another 90 minutes coming up so i really sort of sat on the fence there with my one all prediction uh i wasn't far off and to be perfectly honest at half time it could have been 3-0 to jfc uh but this is this is football guys we all, we all know don't we we all think we all think we're experts and even us so called experts um usually get it wrong to be honest so um don't take much notice of whatever i'm going to say for the second leg prediction <laughs> No no John the intention of course is not to highlight the fact that you were wrong the intention was to maybe spark a conversation on it and you you're fairly right because Jamshedpur could have walked away with the match and Shaji Chetan right. I'm sure you wouldn't disagree with that because mm-hmm. look at the kind of chances that uh, that for example chance that Mobashir had that cleverly worked free kick routine uh, he's, by, by he's, going he's going to disagree he's going to disagree fortune fortune always favors the brave yes of course uh, we'll see yeah. that we'll see what happens now in the second leg Yeah, we'll see, how, we'll see how brave both teams are in the second leg because you've got to play with a lot of courage in the second leg because you know what the obviously you know what's in front of you. Kerala are one they'll they'll want to protect that lead. They'll want to stay in front. You know they won't want to give any stupid free kicks goals away in their own half of the pitch or uh, they 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 need to be you know. So as a coach, you're going into the game and you and that's the one thing that JFC will, will want. They want throw-ins, corners. set pieces free kicks anywhere in and around the blasters goal so blasters yeah. the whole of their defense have got to be so careful they don't give away any unnecessary free kicks in and around their goal because this is what jfc live on and um, as we said earlier but you know you remember back in uh, 2020 chennai got to the final mm. and they won the first leg 4-1 they yeah. won the first it's yeah. game over you know you would think yeah. that's it yeah. it's finished it's finished but the second leg of course they lost 4-2 and just managed to go through on 6-5 result so uh, even though that even though a team had a three goal advantage they they still went into the second leg fully expecting to win it and go through and they they had to fight right to the last minute in that particular night so these semi finals are brilliant any anything can happen in this second leg yes. so uh, we look forward to it on tuesday night it will be fantastic i'm sure yeah. and i'm and i'm sure the uh, the fan park will be fully fully loaded on the, on tuesday yeah. night yeah yeah shaiju Sh- chitran is going to be going to be yeah. leading the pack in the yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but john, john one more one more question adding to this one so uh, uh, this 10 we all know it's a very 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 light margin very light lead very slender lead so for the second leg who will be feeling the pressure most will it be the kerala blasters 1-0 lead how we going to tackle this 1-0 lead or the jamshedpur fc who are the league winners and down 0-1 who will be having the more pressure on the second leg 
Well, I, I think probably Blasters because, I mean, they're, they're now the favourites, you know. They're really now the slight favourites. They're one nil up. They're winning the game. They've just got to get through 90 minutes. If they keep a clean sheet, they're through. They're through to the final if they keep a clean sheet. And they've also seen, they've seen that video that we've just seen of, of the fan park. And uh, they also know that they've, now they've got all these fans that are watching, that are supporting them, which, you know, they've, had, they've got evidence now. They've been able to see visually all these fans. And, and they're one nil up. So they're kind of, they become the favourites. They become the favourites now, I think, to qualify for the final because they're one nil ahead. So there's, JFC have got nothing to lose. They're the Shield winners. If they don't manage to get, to get back into this um, semi-final, if they don't manage it, they're the Shield winners. They're in the Champions League next season. They're, they've rewritten the history books um, in Jamshedpur. Uh, so there's not so much pressure, I don't think, on Jamshedpur at all. Um, but Kerala uh, are under pressure. And I'd imagine that you'll be under pressure as well. <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 but John, I will be sending the second shirt now. <laughs> okay, good man. Well, that's that's settled. Uh, and John, you mentioned about how how Jamshedpur FC are, are league winners, shield winners. We've seen the cauldron, as it's called, the stadium in Jamshedpur, and it, that's also going to be bouncing and back next season. So cannot wait for that. So enough about KBFC versus uh, Jamshedpur FC. Now we let's get into uh, the second semi-final, first leg between uh, Hyderabad mm-hmm. FC and ATK Mohan Bagan FC. Pulast, you were there at the stadium. You you saw how the game went. You had a great view as well from the com box. Yeah. Um, why don't you take us into that game? No, I mean, obviously, a big game in, in the sense I thought that the two, also the two head coaches and the different ways they want their teams to play was all great. But I think my question to John, and I was discussing this with everyone, would be that, would you see, did you see that comeback coming? Because after the first half an hour and the way ATK Mohan Bagan were dominating on the ball and getting the lead, did you see Hyderabad coming back into this in the, in the way they did? Um. No, I didn't because um, ATK Mohan began usually when they go 1 0 up, they tend not to lose a match. They tend to stay ahead. Uh, obviously, they've got a, a very established team uh, full of star players. Uh, and, and for Hyderabad to get back in it, obviously, they had to get back pretty, pretty quickly. Um, I mean, they couldn't have timed it better right on the stroke of half time, getting the equalizing goal. And. Yeah. Um, Obviously, then when Yashir scores the second, as we saw uh, in the second half, uh, to go 2-1 up, um, they really took control of the match. Uh, and I thought um, it, it went according to plan. It went, you know, sometimes as coaches, you have this plan and something upsets it, usually when the opposition score um, and you suddenly have to change things. But, you know, Hyderabad have been a real breath of fresh air, I think, to, to the Hero Indian Super League this season. They've been... They've been really outstanding. And obviously, they, they had uh, just at the end of the season, in the final couple of games, you know, they had, as you know, uh, injuries and sickness in the camp, which meant that they couldn't put out their full team. And, and they suffered. Consequently, you know, the last couple of games, they suffered with not being able to put out their full team. And, and, and it, was, it was really sad because they, they were going to win the Shield. They certainly looked as if they were going to win the Shield, which was an amazing achievement. For the club, uh, but to see them in the top four, I think has been brilliant. As a team, they've probably been my favourite team to watch this season. You know, in all, in all departments. And again, I've been shocked by some of the tender uh, to be, to be playing uh, on a regular basis in the first team. Um, so it was it was a great result for everybody. ATK have certainly had their share of success in the last yeah, few seasons. Yeah. They're still in the game. As I said earlier, you know, Chennai won that first game uh, 4-1 against Go in, in 2020. So um, nothing is beyond ATK Moan began, I don't think. But um, yeah, Hyderabad have, have been uh, a breath of fresh air. I said, I think on, on TV, uh, the last point I want to make um, on TV the other night, that the likes of Chennai in Bengaluru, Mumbai City, FC Goa, we're so used to seeing those four teams uh, and obviously like the likes of ATK, it it's always sort of seems to be them in the semi-finals, challenging for, for the trophy, challenging for the shield. And it was so refreshing, I think, this season to see the likes of Hyderabad, Jamshedpur and, and obviously the likes of Kerala, who have not been there for, for six seasons. It was so refreshing to see 
different teams, different faces, different sets of fans. Uh, and um, for me, I think that's really made the Hero Indian Super League be such a, a, a massive success this season. Yeah, no, absolutely. Varun, what was your reading of how ATK Mohan Bagan approached the game? Because they did take the lead. Uh, do you feel like they, they maybe slacked off a bit in the second half? We'll speak about Yasser's goal after that, but I want to get your thoughts on, on this first. Uh, even I was a little worried about this game. Like, I agree with John Sir, Hyderabad has been a great side and they were a tough challenge. So, I was happy with the lead. Roy Krishna, I think he's not in a great shape and great form because he has been outstanding the previous seasons. This season, I think, you know, it's not the usual Roy Krishna, what we always see. And uh, right now, with the defence line crumbling and conceding three goals, but uh, happy to hear the words that nothing is beyond ATK Mohanbaan and they have the potential, John Sir said. But still, I think it's a big blow to the defence. Thierry's injury might have a huge impact uh, for the next semi-finals. Like two, John, sir? Yeah, listen, um, he's been incredible. How he's... Uh, this season, uh, again, in particular, it's probably been his best season. Uh, he's been so consistent. I think he, he's won two or three heroes of the match. Um, yeah. Both myself and Eric have, have awarded it mm. to him because he's just been a rock uh, in the centre of that defence. And no matter who his defensive partners are, whichever back four he, um, they've, they've chosen to go into the game with, he's always been outstanding. He's always been the leader. He, he sets such great examples all over the pitch. Balls go into the penalty box and it always seems to be Tiri on the end of it. He's always there. And, and this injury, that, this collision that we're seeing the other night, I think it was uh, about an hour, hour into the game, uh, obviously meant that they had to play the last half an hour without him. And they could well be missing him uh, for the second leg on Wednesday night. Um, that will be a big blow to them because he's been truly incredible this season. And um, and and you just you can't buy that experience, Baron. You know yeah. you can't you can't buy that experience. Uh, somebody like him, he's gone through everything, and um, and to see him playing the way that he played uh, this season, I think has been his best season so far. So hopefully he's going to be fit enough to return. Uh, to the second leg on Wednesday night um, because they're going to need him. They're definitely going to need him. Yeah, absolutely. Let's just speak a bit about Mohammed Yasser as well. Yasser, who scored his first Hero ISL goal of the season, uh, one mm -hmm. of the most, in my opinion, most technically gifted Indian footballers. And John, you don't often say that about uh, about Indian footballers. Mm -hmm. As good as they are, as, as good as uh, we've seen them, Yasser is a special one, isn't he? Yeah, and when you look at, you look at his body shape, um, he looks like a footballer. He runs like a footballer. He moves like a footballer. You know, and you can you can tell that. You can pick that up uh, from an early age. And and certainly he's uh, he's got a sweet left foot. Um, he's come on. He, he's been used very well, I think, by the coach. Um, Marquez has used him. Uh, not sort of played him every game, but he, every now and again he he puts him on. He starts him in games. He's taking them off as well after an hour, um, or otherwise he's gone on for the last thirty minutes in games and so on and so forth. So. He's had a he's had a, an excellent season so far, um, and he's wearing the number ten shirt. Huh? So that yeah. that in its that in itself is 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 um, uh, probably the coach is quite happy to have him as a number ten in the team. Um, if you get that number ten shirt, you know it's it tends to denote that uh, he's a pretty good footballer. So um, he's got to he's got to live up to that shirt because I'm sure Okbeche would have enjoyed having the number ten. But he's got the number 20, isn't he? I'll bet he's yeah. got number 20. Yes, right. So he's right. so he's two tens. I'll bet, he, yeah. I'll bet he's two yes. tens, isn't he? Yeah. But yes. I'm, I'm glad you I'm glad you brought uh, Ogbeche up, John, because we're just going to go into visuals of his goal next. And I was at the other end when this goal was scored. Uh, I saw him leaping into the air and it was like, oh, it's another goal for Bart Ogbeche. But when I saw it back, just can you talk a bit about the technique on this header? He just has the faintest of touches, but it still goes in. Yeah, it's, uh, I've often said about him, this guy, when he's in the penalty box, he rarely stands still on set pieces. Um, I, I liken it to a, a, crick, a, crit, a cricketer. When a cricketer is fielding, uh, certainly the ones that are out towards the boundary, as the bowler's about to bowl, they just start to move in, as you know. So they're on the mm. move, so wherever the ball goes. And he's like that in the penalty box. When, when balls are coming into the penalty box, rarely does he ca get caught on his heels. He's usually moving. He's usually on the... He's, he's like smelling a goal. And he knows that if the ball comes to him, he's, he's going to be the first one to react. He'll, he'll react before defenders. And he gets a lot of his goals uh, like this. You know, he gets rebounds. Goalkeeper makes a save. 
it will drop out and I'll bet you will be the first one on the board because his reaction time is so sharp. Yeah. And and that header the other night, again, it just come into, he, he kind of knows where the goal is. And I think, you know, a good exercise would be to actually put a blindfold on him and just spin him around half a dozen times. And yeah. it's, and it, <laughs> and it's, no, listen, it's still be able to point to where the goal is. You know, they, they seem to have this kind of instinct. Mm -hmm. um, the people like Robbie Fowler had it, you know, Henri had it, you know, they, they just, they just got this, this, this ability to know where the goal, and when that ball come to him, he didn't have, he couldn't get a, much power on it. He just got big uh, direction more than anything. Yeah, he knew yeah. where, he knew where the goal point. was. Yeah. And, and he's got the slightest touch, just helping it on, on its way, basically into the bottom corner. Uh, and, I've seen Ockbetchy do that on, on numerous occasions this season. He's got a lot of goals that are like that. And um, certainly that one the other night was 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 brilliant for them. And yeah, he obviously yeah. celebrated it in his usual way. So um, let's hope we see a few more like that on Wednesday night. Yeah, that, that's a great analogy, isn't it? He moves like a cricketer. Uh, John, Varun is a bit of a cricketer himself. Uh, in fact, <laughs> not just a cricketer. He's a man of uh, many talents. Uh, he is... Uh, He's, he's dabbled a bit in football refereeing as well. I'd say a bit is an understatement because uh, <laughs> he's well on his way to becoming a qualified uh, football referee as well. So who knows? We might see him uh, in the Hero Indian Super League soon. Varun, is that... Uh, running, running, running around on running the pitch. Yeah. That would be classic. Well, and hope you all don't curse me. <laughs> <laughs> now, but Varun, uh, I'll just throw it to you now because I believe you had a question to John about the coaches that have impressed him this season. Right, and especially, you know, if we look at the top four teams right now, I think some of the coaches have done an amazing job. Uh, some of the coaches, uh, you know, lost out because of the injury list that they had. But I would like to ask you, who's the one who has impressed you a lot this season, you know, well, with the coordination, with the team, and he has been friendly with the players, maybe. So, who do you think has impressed you the most this season, especially from the top four teams, maybe? Yeah, um, Baron, I think it's it's rather difficult probably to narrow it down just to one, to one coach because... Um, in, in in many different ways, they've uh, um, you know Ferrando has, has come into uh, ATK and he's he's changed their style of play, which is not easy uh, when you when you come into a club. He suddenly you know he, instead of them playing fairly direct and right. fairly and fairly defensive as they were uh, before, uh, he he wants them to be a lot more free flowing. He's got the players to get the ball off the goalkeeper. And build from the back. Uh, they've, they've been they've been much more exciting to watch in that respect. Uh, Owen Coyle has, has has done different things with with his team. He's in his second year, and he's obviously learned a hell of a lot from last season. And he's made the the, the correct changes in his team, um, doing the things that he wants them to do. And he's obviously introduced the likes of, of Stewart in, into his team, who has been incredibly effective uh, and has a superb. Uh, relationship with the rest of the team and I mean Marquez again Hyderabad has just have just been breathtaking all season and you can you can see again he's in a second season Varun as well um, just missed out as you know uh, last season by by two points um, because he, they had too many draws and this season he, he, he obviously wanted uh, Ogbechi and uh, he's built his team around Ogbechi and, and around Joe Victor in the centre of midfield, and obviously around uh, Juan An at the back, he's got the spine really strong in his team. And, and I think you, you know, all the coaches and 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 obviously Ivan has done an uh, incredible job with the introduction of his foreigners. And it's all about recruitment. It really is. You see the teams that haven't recruited well this season, and they haven't played well. Um, you have to get a great mix. Uh, and and if I could just go back to season four, I had I had Calderon, um, Sereno, and uh, as two def uh, two defensive um, players, and I also obviously had Mailson in between them. And um, Sereno and Calderon were just such fantastic professionals every day of the week, not just on the training ground, and not just on on a match day. They were superb with. All the young boys, they treated all the rest of the team as equals. They didn't say, you know, we're, we're superstar foreigners from Europe and you lot are just Indian players. They treated them as equals. And I think when I look at Hyderabad and, and I look at Jamshedpur and, and Kerala in particular, they seem to have that same kind of relationship with players 
all seem to be treated the same by the coach. Um, so, Varon, you really put me under pressure, mate, to, <laughs> <laughs> to, 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 to actually say one in particular. Um, I, I think I would like probably if, if I was if I had to say one, I'd probably say Marquez. I think I think Mar Marquez as um, with a relatively unfashionable team, unfashionable club. He he's he, he's reached heights this season with his team that um, I don't think too many of their fans would have expected at the start of the season. So I'd, I'd probably say Marquez. Of the choice. And I agree with you, it's not only about the tactics and the planning, it's also about the relationship with the players for a coach. Yeah, you you know yourself, you I mean you live together. They they see more uh, they they see more of each other every single day in the hotel right. than they would of their wives if they were at home with their wife, you know. <laughs> they 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 just literally live out of each other's pockets, and that's not easy, you know. 24-7, you're just it's football, 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 and your teammates and so on. And obviously with the bubble this year, they've had to cope with that as well. But um, that's a hard bit. And, and the coach, uh, I'll just like to finish this. You answer 500 questions a day as the head coach. Not, not 10. You, you, answer, you, you ask every single day, what time's trading, boss? How many do you want, boss? How many players do you want, boss? Uh, who's injured, boss? Um, what time's dinner, boss? What time are we leaving? What time's the bus going? What time have we got to go to bed? Uh, it's just non-stop. Uh, and then you've got all the media to deal with. You know, mm. you will answer. So as the head coach, you're bombarded. When you get in your bed at night, and I've said this a couple of times on the show, when you go to your bed at night, all you want to do is close your eyes and go to sleep. But if you've had a bad result, you don't go to sleep. You're, you're awake all night. You're thinking about the substitutions that you probably made a mistake with. You're thinking about the injuries. You're thinking about the next match. It's 24-7. Um, so Marquez, I think, has probably dealt with this as, as well as anybody. Uh, thanks for sharing that, John. That's fascinating insight. But if you thought mm -hmm. that Varun's question uh, was pressurizing or put you under pressure, wait for what Pulas has <laughs> lined up for you because uh, uh, he might just take it up a notch. Pulas, go for it. Well, John... Um... You know, it's, it's pretty straightforward in terms of asking you this, but five Indian players you would sign. Hypothetically, there's a new club, your head coach. Yeah. And, and the owners have said, name five Indian players that you would sign straight away. And we're going Across to get defense, them. midfield, attack. And we'll go and get them. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I think, you know, Without without sort of looking maybe at the senior players, I'll probably just concentrate on, on the on the on the younger one. Yeah, probably yeah. Uh, uh, Roshan. I think would probably be uh, in that five. Um, I've been extremely impressed with him this season. Everything he's done, whether he's played right back or left back, or um, you know he takes all set pieces. Rarely does he fail in his delivery. I think Roshan has been has been outstanding. Um, I know he's another left back, but I like Mishra as well at Hyderabad. Uh, Akash, I think he's uh, he's another one that's had a, a very good season. Um, and I like Ayush. I like Ayush. Uh, and what again? What what age is he? Nineteen or something? Yes. I mean, just incredible. Uh, he he's been a little bit in and out of the team, but in in the last um, sort of. 12, 14 games, he's been a regular in the centre of that midfield uh, and it's a massive responsibility. And when you, you, He's played alongside, obviously, Victor and I think um, he, uh, just, just how he is um, with, with the way that he goes about his game. Um, he puts his foot in, he's, he's not shy, he's not, he's not afraid to put his foot in, um, he's, not, he's not afraid to get involved. Uh, his feet are good. Um, he gets around the pitch. He's up and down the pitch all the time. And I think uh, the other night in particular, I thought he had a, a very good game. And, and it's difficult playing against Jamshedpur. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's difficult because you know you, you spend a lot of time going back towards your own goal because they're very direct, obviously, with, with the with the way that they play. So um, I've liked uh, what Ayush has done. Obviously, someone someone like Tapa has had a disappointing season, but um, yeah. I would I wouldn't rule him out. I think uh, he's somebody that. If uh, if our owner would allow me to go and sign him, I would uh, I certainly yeah. want to yeah. get and and I think um, uh, Rohit again another Hyderabad player 
Uh, I think he's he's had a good season um, on that left hand side, Rohit Danu. Um, I've been impressed with the way that he's played this year. Uh, he didn't play the other night, and he wasn't even on the bench. Yeah, he wasn't. Was he injured? Should be fine. I mean, I think we'll get more word from the club. We'll know by the next semi final. Let's hope he's available. Yes. So yeah, he, he's another. But one. that's a good list, John. That's that's a great list. A couple of curve yeah. curveballs in there as well. I mean, with with Danu because you've seen you've gone for potential, which is kind of you know you can coach them and you can these are these are players who can get better. Mm. I mean, I mean, it, it's like sometimes with the hero of the match, I tend to not give the the blatantly obvious one. You know, somebody scores scores a goal and they win one 0 and you give give the award to them. Um, and maybe all they've actually done in the game is actually score the winning goal. I, I sometimes tend to want to look for somebody slightly unusual. I gave it to Ricky one night, Jamshed Poor played. Yeah. yeah. And I gave it to Ricky and I just thought, you know, it, it's it's good to recognise people. I know he's one of the older players, but it's also good to recognise someone that's that's made a massive contribution to the outcome of the game um, by awarding him the hero of the match. And um, that's what I, I tend to want to do. And, and likewise... When I, I knew that, obviously, I was pre-warned that I, I was going to have to select a few players, and I tend to want to look for some of the younger, up-and-coming ones. But that you should really keep an eye on these guys, you know, because again, um, these are the sort of guys that uh, Igor Stimak, at some stage, will obviously include in, in in the national team, and they're the future of of Indian football if if they realise what they've got and the potential that they've got. And if they can live their life accordingly, they can be great players if they continue to work hard. Yeah, yeah. Do you have... Can I just ask one question? Sorry. Um, do you have a problem here sometimes that players suddenly get into the team, become regular players, and then suddenly think they're superstars and it doesn't work out? Yeah, I think so. That, that, that I mean, that attitude management is also something... Mm -hmm. That has to come. I think even with the coaches, it will come with experience because this is the first batch of young players who are seeing a lot of exposure. And mm -hmm. I'm sure there's, there's people in place, hopefully advisors, agents, coaches, other members of the staff who continue to remind them that, you know, keep your feet on the ground. And I hope that there'll be a few who might get away, you know, and, 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 and you know, stall, and John, but hopefully not many. John, John, I would... Uh... I would love to I would love to request you to kindly sign a 19 20 year old goalkeeper also perhaps you can gill. <laughs> yes. Yeah. No, he's, he's, yeah. He, he's he's been impressive as well and uh, Shaju Chetan uh, uh, 21 year old Ayush Adhikari not not the the tender years of 19 that we imagine him to be but yeah. there's still not too much of a difference between 19 and 21 is there is just no, I mean it's the no. it's 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 here or there. So in Hindi we say unnis bees ka farak. So isme unnis ikkis ka farak ho gaya. So that's mm -hmm. that's that's, uh, that's oh, something yeah. we can take away. But John, uh, you have five minutes left, by the way, for you to grab lunch in case you wanna uh, wanna do that. And I know we've been extremely greedy with you today. And thank you so much no for being no so problem. generous with your time. Uh, it's no been an problem. absolute pleasure. Uh, so please go well. Uh, all the best for whatever you do decide to do in the future. And we do hope to see you back in an in a Hero Indian Super League dugout very very soon. Thank you very much. Have See you, John. Day. See you around. Have a great you. day, guys. Bye, bye, bye. Bye. Thanks, John. Wow, I could just sit through it for mm. for maybe an hour more, but unfortunately we can't because we do have a few other things to highlight before we wrap up. We mentioned the white shirt story earlier, right? Uh, so why don't we just take it full circle uh, and see exactly how that played out on the LFL show earlier, uh, a, a month back, in fact. So take a look at how this happened, guys. <laughs> Whatever is the whatever is the answer regarding the white shirt, I am here one for you. <laughs> <laughs> this is this yeah, is to, to be very to be very sincere. This is for you to wear for the first leg of the first semi-final <laughs> ISL 2021-22. He is this ready. Is for you. You, I will wear it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, with Shaiju Chetan, you have to confirm you will send it over to Ivan. 
if they reach the if they reach Goa 100% it will it will reach Goa very nice i will make we will make a video me preparing with that shirt as a proof <laughs> brilliant brilliant hi coach sending you the shirt as promised kindly accept this small gift from my side we are rich and win it Hey Shaju, I got your gift. I'm gonna open it. Look, there is a note. Dear coach, proud of you. Small gift from my side. Kindly accept. Prayers and wishes for the upcoming matches. With lo- love and respect. Thank you Shaju. I'm gonna wear it tomorrow. And before we weigh in with that, let's let someone else also weigh in about the story because we weren't the only ones who noticed uh, that that the sequence of events transpired the way they did. Take a look at uh, Mark Tompkins, our very own Mark Tompkins, on commentary as well, making this observation. Ivan Vukmanovic, who's wearing a special new shirt tonight, which was sent to him by one of our regional language commentators, Shaiju. Special gift for getting his side to the semi-finals. He'll be. So, so you have another shirt to send, I believe, Shaiju Chetan. Uh, what yes. luck do you think it'll bring, John Gregory? So yes, so yes, just, just for the, just for an answer for this. Uh, you, yes. you, you people won't believe. What I, I cannot show you the, I cannot show you the Instagram uh, message which uh, Ivan sent to me. Ivan actually asked me, I will wear it for the second leg also. That was a, that is a, a reply he came uh, given to me. Oh, legendary. When are you sending uh, Pulas, Varun and, and, and yeah, me? Yeah, I was going to ask the same. My size is XS, 38. <laughs> <laughs> you, th- ha- uh, you three, you three in my, in my heart, always. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll take that, but I'll also take the white shirt. I'll, I'll like take that. Same, same, I'll same take here. Even, even if it comes with a face of you, we print it on. <laughs> no, 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 no. After, after the season, we will be having an LFL party here in Kerala. I am hosting. Great. Oh, oh lovely, lovely, lovely. Great. I'll take the first flight there and come. Uh, but speaking of which, uh, we also have, uh, uh, like I mentioned, Arun, right, who is part of our digital team. And he was the one who took photos of mm. uh, Sir John uh, Gregory. I call him Sir as, a, as an honorary title bestowed upon by myself because of the stature he holds in the league. Uh, so he's actually flying uh, for the EISL finals as well. And the EISL is something that we uh, have been following and tracking closely through the season. So now let's take a look at the EISL table. Uh, now that the top four has been decided, we're going to be having uh, the playoffs very, very soon on the 14th and 19th of March. Uh, you can catch all the action on the YouTube and uh, Facebook official channels of the Hero Indian Super League. We have SEs Bengal, Mumbai City FC, Chennai and FC, and FC Goa who have qualified for the top four. In fact, a lot of the players themselves... Is that the table? Out. Is that the table? Uh, right. Like the real- <laughs> yeah, there, there's some sort of... Almost like something's happening. ...reversal that's happening this season, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so we actually recorded uh, a few of the players uh, shouting out for the EISL counterparts uh, who are going to be playing in the semi-finals. So take a look at these really, really sweet messages of encouragement for the EISL athletes. Hi, Navin and Sarnesh. Wishing you all the best for the EISL playoff. Bring home the trophy. All in for Chennai. Unkit and Shayantan, congratulations uh, semi-final reach karne ke liye. Aur abhi aap log top of the table. Ho. तो आगे भी जाके बहुत अच्छा करना है तो बहुत सारी शुभकामनाएं है कांग्रेचुलेशन एंड बेस्ट ऑफ लक जॉय इज बंगाल अफनान एंड वंसाज ऑल द बेस्ट गाइस फॉर द सेमी फाइनल्स ब्रिंग इट होम हाय गाइस क्विक मैसेज फॉर कॉम एंड एशिंग गुड लक इन योर सेमी फाइनल इन द ईआईएसओ and you know if if you see the kind of uh, preparation that these EISL athletes have been putting in a few of, a few have uploaded reels about uh, their daily routines it all starts with the workout and then you know there's the protein <laughs> shake guzzling which happens oh. and then and then the workout of the fingers and then it's <laughs> They're glued, glued to the screens. But uh, uh, the ESL finals will also take place on the 20th of March. So do uh, keep a close eye on on when uh, when those will be held because the timing will be announced very, very soon. And before we now uh, wrap up the show, we have 
uh, small matter of also mentioning that Terra Virtua, our digital collectibles partner, uh, has a new drop. So you can head over to uh, terravirtua.io slash ISL uh, to check out the collection and there'll be a new drop in sequence uh, every few weeks and every few months. And that's something that we really, really are excited about at the league. So do uh, take a look. Plus, I know that you've uh, had a chance to take a look at the collection as well before. Right? What do you make of I it? I have. I have. Uh, I'm, just, I'm just now thinking which one to you know, go for waiting for something really, really precious to drop, and then yeah, r- right after our show is done, just just log on terabacho.io and uh, terabacho.io <laughs> slash isl, and done, then done. Uh, then let me know. Maybe maybe I can I can fix something up for you. Let's see. That's perfect. <laughs> Lovely. All right then. Uh, very quickly, let's look forward to the upcoming second legs of the of the of the semifinals. Uh, the first leg, like like we always know. Ended 1-0 to Kerala Blasters FC and 3-1 to Hyderabad FC against uh, ATK Mohan Bagan. But the uh, second leg of semi-final won between Kerala Blasters and Jamshedpur FC at the Tilak Maidan, uh, a stadium where, Til- uh, where Kerala Blasters has done exceedingly well. Uh, and the second leg of the second semi-final will happen at the Athletic Stadium in Bambalim where Pulas Dhar and Suya Shupadhyay, that is myself, are going to be in attendance. And hopefully we will get to see a very, very exciting match uh, uh, Shaju Chetan, uh, Varun, if you have any messages that you would like us to pass on to the players, do let us know and we shall chime in with our words of encouragement. Not that they'll count for a lot because we'll <laughs> that match, but, but do let me know. Right, uh, so we're going to wrap up with the goals of the week as we always do because we've actually covered each and every goal that we had scored on the LFL show this week. And even though uh, the the latter part of last week ended with the league stages ending, it would be only fitting to to showcase all the goals that, that were scored because uh, we had a few exciting games as well involving Odisha FC and the other teams. So do take a look. Any parting thoughts, guys, before we head into the goals of the week? No, just just no, excited. No I'm 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 looking for forward to how the response will be from the teams which are behind. Right, 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 right. Chalo, that's that then. Uh, that's a wrap on an exceedingly long episode of the Let's Football Live Show. But uh, it was it was a pleasure having John Gregory on the show as well. And uh, we do hope to have, like you said, Pulas uh, a cracking second leg of the second yes. semi-finals as well. Yes. yes. So take care, guys, and see you next week. That's all from us. Bye bye. Bye bye.